Let's get it stand our feet. Like the song says, how can I be quiet? Let's just stand our feet and shout unto God with a voice of triumph this morning. Our God reigns forever and ever and ever. Glorious is your name, O oh Lord. from you every day. Your loving kindness is better than life to us.
mercies are new every morning, Father. We just want to, right now, Father, we're chasing after you. We're chasing, we're forgetting those things behind, and we're looking forward, Father, for what you have. Father, we come to you in a place of surrender. Father, which is a place of wanting you to have your way. We're only at the cross. We come alive. We thank you that in Jesus, you change everything.
from the grave. Because he's victorious, Lord, we are right now, Lord God, victorious in you, Lord. We speak it now, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's declare it this morning. Chains fall. Chains fall. We say it. Father, because of the cross and what you did for us on the cross, it changed everything. It changed everything. Instead of fear, we have peace. Instead of stress, we have joy. Father, we live in you. We live and move. Our being is in you. Thank you for what you've done for us.
of us, Lord. All that you did for us, Lord. And I'll never forget what he's done. you, Father. Go ahead and lift your hands up to him and just begin to look back. You know, the Bible doesn't tell us to be looking back very often, but sometimes we need to just take a look back and realize just how faithful he has been to us. And he'll continue that because God doesn't change. Father, we praise you and thank you, Lord, as we just look back just a little bit. Because we know you want us to keep our eyes ahead of us, pressing toward the mark. But Father, I remember the words that David said. David looked back just a little bit as he began to glimpse your hand and working in his life. And he said, I was young and now I'm old. And he said, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Fathers, we look back, we realize how many times we questioned where you were at. We look back, you were there. We know, Father, in the New Testament, it said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. That you're our helper and you will always be there with us. And your word tells us to boldly declare that. Thank you, Father God, for what you have done. You have wiped away all of our sins, our transgressions, our iniquities with the blood of your Son. As the Scripture says, nailing them to the cross. You have wiped away the curse of the law. That your people are not cursed, but have been blessed by you. Through the plan of your salvation that your Son completed and accomplished. And salvation is complete. And now it's time for the people of God to proclaim it and give them the good news 
that they have been forgiven as ambassadors of righteousness, ambassadors for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father, that there are liberties and freedoms being born again. We have a better covenant established upon better promises. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done. We'll probably never even realize everything because of your grace. Many times we think it's our abilities. But when we stand before him, we'll realize it was your ability. It was your unction. It was your strength. It was your knowledge. By your grace, your ability. Salvation has been wrought to man. The price has been paid. The wages of sin have been paid for. Now we can have that abundant life, abundant living, living separate from the curse and separate from sin. Father, walking in that new nature, your nature that you put on the inside of us. The Father, we're not just outsiders, but now we're on the inside. And you've come to abide on the inside of us. And Father, it's so gracious to know that today you have called us your sons and daughters. Now, Father, we lift our hands to you as sons and daughters, worshiping you and praising you, Father, because we know that heaven is real. We know our final destination is going to be there in heaven. But, Father, I want to thank you, Lord. We're going to occupy in this life. And, Father, we're going to overcome as you've called the church to do, to be an example of your glory and your strength and your power. Thank you, Father, for your grace for your mercies that they are new every morning. Thank you for the anointing and all that you have given to us. And Father, every day we can look up because we know no matter what happens, at the end of the day, we are still going to heaven to be with you forever, praising you and glorifying you. But Lord, we're going to reign in this life. We're going to praise you right now giving you all the glory, all of the honor that you so rightly deserve. Thank you, Father, that you are causing us always to triumph, that we are the head and not the tail, that we are above and not beneath. No matter what the enemy comes, Father God, and brings, you always raise a standard up that's greater. Father, we want to thank you that we're not just overcoming, but we're more than overcomers more than conquerors. Father, we're reigning because you have bought that victory. We're reigning in that life because of what Jesus has done for us. The Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory for what you have done. Thank you, Father God, your grace, your mercies. You load us daily with all of our benefits. More grace today, more mercy today. Thank you, Father, that we can accomplish what you have called us to do. And, Lord, we give you all the praise, all the glory. Come on, lift both your hands to him and thank him and praise him. Oh, Father, we give you all the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise. Thank you, Father God. We know where our future is. And, Father, we're setting our affections, our mind on things above. Looking to you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. You are our strength. You are our might. You are the reason that we have the victory. Thank you, Father God. The victory, oh, the victory. The victory is mine because of your son. He purchased and he bought us. And we're your possessions this day. Father, make with determination today, everybody in this room, that everything that you would say, everything that you would do, that it would bring glory, that it would bring honor to him today. Father, thank you, Lord. We honor you this day, giving you all the praise and all the glory. And I thank God, hallelujah, that we're reigning today. Thank you for the victory. Oh, there is victory in Jesus. He is my Savior forever, and He bought me, and He's teaching us how to reign in this life. Father, we praise and magnify you. 
My sins are forgiven. I'm not cursed, but I'm blessed. I'm the head and not the tail. I am reigning in this life. Glorifying Him. Magnifying God today. God is greater than any mountain that I'll face. God is greater than any valley I'm going to walk through. Even though there's this shadow of death, but I have abundant life abiding on me. Oh, I praise you, Father God. I glorify. Let's sing that song again. Everybody sing it like you believe it.
I read, was reading up. I'd heard it years ago, but I had looked at it again this past week. But I never heard this about the testimony of the, the 12 disciples, of course, Judas, not included, but you find the book of Acts, chapter 1, they voted in Matthias, who took that part. And then it also talked about Paul. But it talked about how all they were persecuted. And John was the only one that never died through persecution. But I remember Jesus, the brother of James, and I never heard anybody, I knew how he died, but I never heard what he did. He was crucified like his Savior, his brother Jesus. But in history records that when they were bringing him to the cross, it was recorded that James said and his actions when they saw the cross, he saw the cross where he was going to be hung on it and crucified because they wanted him to deny his faith and he said, I'll not do it. And he said, then you're going to die like your Lord and Savior. But here's the thing that struck me. When they were taking him to the cross, James saluted the cross. He saluted the cross and he said, I've been waiting for many, many years for this day to come. Boy, think about that. No fear of the cross because he was ready to die. And I thought, wow, what a privilege and the cross and the blood of Jesus that James said. He saluted it and said, I've been, I've been waiting on this day. I've been looking forward to this day because he was going to be associated with Jesus. What an honor it is for you and I to be associated with Jesus and what he has done for you and I today. Honey, if you would, come on up. Share what the Lord is telling you. Do I need to turn the mic on? I do. Okay. We've been singing about I'll Never Forget. Often when we think about the cross, we think about salvation. Isaiah 53 verse 1 says who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed and then when you go to verse 4 it says surely He hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows, meaning our sicknesses and diseases. Surely he hath borne your sicknesses and your diseases. When Jesus went to the cross, he took your sickness and he took your diseases. When he went to Calvary, he took your sickness and he took your disease. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. That was our sin. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace. Our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. See, when Jesus went to Calvary, he went to Calvary for our sin. Never forget that. But when he went to Calvary, I want you to understand, he didn't go to Calvary just for your sin. He went for your sickness. He went for your disease. 
He went for your mental anguish, your anxiety, your fear, your frustration, all those things that people tend to carry today. I'll never forget. See, often when we think of Calvary, we think that he went so I could get born again and I can go to heaven. And that is a tremendous blessing for you and I. But we should never forget that we don't have to carry sickness. We don't have to carry disease. We don't have to walk around being anxious and fearful. That is not what God wants for you and I today. We are free from all of that. All of that. We should not be walking around fearful. We should not be walking around anxious. We should not be a faint of heart. That is not what my Jesus did. Jesus went to Calvary and delivered you, delivered me, delivered all of the church. Delivered. He wants everybody free from all of that today. That is his plan for you and I. We should never forget. Never forget. His power is present in this house today to set you free if that is your heart's desire. So if that is your heart's desire, you make your way to the front of Freedom Worship Center and His anointing will set you free today. Then we will begin to teach you how to keep yourself free. That's His plan and that's His purpose. If that's your desire, you come up. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to help you get free today in the name of Jesus. I will never, ever forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget in the name of Jesus. This is not a place of judgment. This is a place of freedom, a place of freedom. I'll never forget in Jesus' name. Thank you. If that's you and you need healing for your bodies, God wants to heal your body. But even Jesus, he didn't make anybody respond. Many times they came to him because they recognized him as the healer. Don't stand there and think, I can just tolerate it. I can just put up with it when God wants to heal you. You're ready to receive. Maybe it mental anguish. Because man's peace is not the peace of God. And God wants us to have peace of heart and peace of mind. That's why he bore our peace so we could have the peace of God. Any one of those, come on up here right now.
prayer, the prayer of agreement on anything. Come on up here right now, honey. Just come on up here. Prayer of agreement on anything. You just need somebody to hook up with your faith. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Thank you, Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's part of being the body of Christ. People agreeing with you and hooking up with you so that you can stand strong in the Lord. Honey, come on up here if you would, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and lay hands on Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stretch your hands forward if you would. Scripture talks about rejoicing. Yeah, that's, come on up here, Jim. That's why I said, do you have something? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stretch your hands forward. You have something to do with it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Bible talks about rejoicing with those that are rejoicing and crying with those. Right now we're rejoicing. Thank God for what He's doing in their lives right now. Let's sing that song. What He's done, what He's done. Let's continue praising Him. What He's done. Hallelujah. What He's done. What he's
glorify him, honor him, magnify him. See, when one person in the body of Christ gets ministered to, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Isaiah began to speak of the anointing of God. In the 10th chapter, he said that it's the anointing. The anointing is the power of God. And it also can be the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is the power of God. When he moves, the Bible says that the anointing of God is the power of God that comes to destroy yokes of bondages. Because sometimes we can run into things and it's a yoke. It's like a hard place. Can't get a breakthrough. We need that power of God, that anointing, to break that yoke of bondage. It's not from God. So we can get a breakthrough. So we can walk in our freedom. So we can walk in the liberties that God has given us. God is a God of breakthroughs. He likes it because He wants His people to be free because you're the representative of Him on the earth today. And He wants the world to know that His people are well taken care of. Father, we glorify You today and honor You today. Thank You, Father, for the anointing. Thank you, Father. Everybody say this. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing of God. It breaks every yoke of bondage, whether it be sickness, mental anguish, demonic influence. If it's a bondage, the power of God will break every yoke of bondage. Thank you, Lord. Hands were laid on those today. They received that anointing. That anointing right now is bringing about a healing, a cure, and effect in their lives, in their bodies, in their minds. I believe that. They are set free in Jesus' name by your power. Thank you, Father God, for setting the captives free. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Come on, lift your hands up one more time. Thank him and praise him. Man, you ought to be excited when somebody gets set free, gets help. Only God can do that. Man has all kinds of remedies, but only God can set the captives free. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your glory, for your honor, that you're worthy of all of it. Thank you, Father. There is no hopeless situation for the child of God. There is your word, the truth. There is the anointing that will break that yoke of bondage. Thank you, Father God, for what you have done in our lives. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our lives. Thank you, Father God, that you have anointed us. You have equipped and called us. We give you all the praise, all the glory. Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Being loosed and let go. Being loosed from that infirmity. Being loosed from that bondage. Thank you, Father, for our liberties. The freedoms that we have, being sons and daughters of you, Father God. It's so good to be free. So good to be free. Say it with me. It's so good to be free from the curse. I am not cursed. I am blessed. Say it again. I am not cursed. I am blessed. Everywhere I go, the power of God. The presence of God goes with me. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to hide my light. I'm going to let my light shine. My light is your light. 
I'm going to let them know you're a good God. You're a liberating God. A God who wants his people to be free, to be out of the bondages that the enemy has brought. Thank you, Lord. I'm free, and I know it indeed, and I give you all the praise, all the glory. I just think we need to sing that song just one more time, what he's done, what he's done, what he's done. Come on, let's sing that song again, what he's done. All the glory, all the glory, all the glory of God. Thank you, Lord, my sins, they are forgiven. My future's heaven. Oh, let's sing that song. What he's done, sing it loud like you mean it and believe it. I want to read something to you. Jesus in his earthly ministry in Luke the 13th chapter the heading says the woman with infirmity healed. But I want you to notice Jesus addressing because she was and he called her bound. It said in Luke the 13th chapter verse 10 and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Eighteen years. Notice was bowed together. In other words, she was bowed over and could in no wise lift up herself. Can you imagine living life bowed over like that for eighteen years? The best vision you have are your shoelaces. Notice in verse 13, and he laid his hands on her as we did this morning. And he laid her hands on her and immediately she was made straight and she glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Isn't that amazing? 
I tell you, the best place to get healed is when you're at church. Best place to get free is when you're under that corporate anointing. That's the best time. That's the easiest time. Why? Because you got people that are supporting you. You got people that are dealing with things just like you. Nobody's going to throw stones. Nobody's going to look down. They want to be set free. You want to be set free. That's one of the reasons we come together. So we can learn and then be loosed from our infirmities and be set free from these things that the enemy is trying to put on us through mental thoughts and anguish and through physical things. I want you just to lift your hand up to the Lord. At least one hand up to the Lord. And today, when you leave this service, anytime you think about anything other than being loosed and being set free, this is what I want you to say. I want you to say, thank God, the anointing today. Every person that got hands laid on them today, I believe they received that anointing. That anointing is working in their bodies. That anointing is working in their mind. Because see, the mind's an organ. The mind can be healed because it's an organ just like a heart, a lung, a kidney. As a matter of fact, I never saw it in this life. But so much mental anguish, so many different mental disorders, and we think that it can't be healed. But a scripture that we read over, and many of us are familiar with it, God even said in the Old Testament that he would restore our soul. In other words, God's in the business of restoring our minds. So when people and doctors say that you're going to lose your memory, thought process, and your mind, run to God. God said, I'll heal your mind. I'll renew it. I'll restore it. So you have complete comprehension. You don't have any memory loss. If that's you today, you're feeling like, like you're losing your mind and oh, there's so many words that go with it. Dementia, Alzheimer's, all those things. But I'm here to tell you the doctors have a name for it. But God has a name for it. He said restore. That's the word of God today. God said, I'm the restorer of the, of the soul of a man, which is mind, his will, and his emotions. If that's you today, would everyone just bow your head for a moment? Not meant to embarrass anybody. But when God calls things out, he's given you the opportunity when he moves like this, to get it now instead of waiting. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If that's you today and you feel like, you feel like you're losing your mind, like you're concerned about different mental disorders, and it doesn't matter about what your family is. You're, if you're a child of God, you're in the family of God. There's healing in the family of God. There's restoration in the family of God. Because God came to restore the soul of a man. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. If that's you today with every head bowed, every eye closed, please nobody looking around. Show that reverence toward that person and their need and honor them like you would want them to honor you. If that's you this morning, and you're saying, that's for me, Pastor. I, I just feel like sometimes my mind is just... And I've got those things and thoughts about that. If that's you this morning, would you just raise your hand where you're at and say, that's for me? Hallelujah. We're not going to be embarrassing. Anyone, I'm going to look across here real, real quickly. Don't be looking around. I see that hand. Thank you, lady. Thank you, lady. I see that hand. Anybody else? Thank you. I see that hand, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I see that hand. Anybody else? These are lies that the enemy has tried to make us accept. And God has an answer. He said, I'll restore your soul. I'll restore it. God likes restoration. We're going to take his report. 
And thank God for doctors. They're trying to get people healed well too. But sometimes their medicine doesn't heal you. It just keeps you from not getting worse. But God wants you to be healed. Anybody else? I don't mean to embarrass anybody. Nobody looking around on either one of those situations. I want all of us, if we could, just for a moment, just to stand. All of us stand, if we could, please. And I want all of us, including those that raised your hand, I want you right where you're sitting just to stay there. Sometimes you're to come forward, sometimes you're not. And I want all of us to raise our hands up. Raise your hands up to God. This is an act of submitting to Him, committing to Him. Those of you that raised your hands, I want all of us to say this prayer, but it's specifically those of you that raised your hands up, you need to get ready to receive from God that restoration, that restoring of the soul. Say this with me, everyone. Father God, I realize with you all things are possible. There is nothing with you that is impossible. I've raised my hands. I've heard your call. I need your help. I need your healing touch. I need you to restore my mind. Father God, by my hands lifted, my voice raised to you, I receive your restoring power right now to my mind. Thank you, Father. I receive it by faith. Thank you, Lord, for healing my mind, for healing my memory. Thank you, Father. I believe I receive it by faith right now in Jesus' name. Now, I want everybody specifically, I want all of us to praise him. But if you believe that prayer in Jesus' name, I want you to, from this day forward, anytime you have a thought come to you that's contrary to your mind being restored, I want you to say, thank you, Father. You're the restorer of my mind. Thank you, Lord. This Sunday morning, I receive my healing. My mind is healthy. My mind is healed. My mind is whole. Come on, everybody say it. My mind is healthy. My mind is healed. My mind is whole. Say this again. My mind is healthy. My mind is healed. My mind is whole. I retain, I remember things. Just like I was a teenager all over again. Thank you, Father. You're my healer. Say it again. You're my healer. Say it again. You're my healer. Come on, say it again. You're my healer. Oh, thank you, Lord. You are my healer. Thank you. You heal my body. You heal my mind. You set me free. Thank God I can have some heaven on earth right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, oh, praise you, Father God, for what you've done. Let's sing that again. What he's done. Come on. What he's done. Oh, hallelujah. What he's done. <laughs>
rather different type of thing, but I want everybody in this place right now, because the camera's here, and we put these out, but I want everybody to stretch your hands toward the camera because I believe that people are going to watch this this morning, that God's going to minister to them if, if they'll receive. There's going to be some people like anything that didn't receive, but there are people out there that need to be set free, and if you'll receive what he's done, then it'll be for you. I just want to speak to those that are going to watch this, that God is still healing. God is still setting free the captives. The blood of Jesus is still washing and cleansing them. If you'll accept that into your life when sin gets out of the way then every bondage can be broken and taken out of the way because the only leverage that the enemy has is sin and transgression but Jesus took that out of the way and paid the price accept that forgiveness if you're a believer if you're not a believer then accept Christ into your life and become born again and have that new life that he has in store for you so right now, Father, I just pray for those people that are going to watch this. If you will just accept that anointing right now into your life, because if you're a believer, the power of God has been in you and on you the whole time. You just accept that and you receive it and say, Thank you, Father God, I've received my healing today. Thank you, Father God, I've received my mind, my soul being restored being renewed, being quickened right now. Thank God for doctors, but nobody can heal me like Jesus. Nobody can deliver me like my Father God. And I receive that healing. I receive that healing in my mind and in my body. And I thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. And then I want you to continue this week as we've been telling people here to continue to praise Him. And every time you have a thought come to you about not being healed, not being set free, I want you to declare it out of your mouth boldly. No, Jesus is my healer. No, by his stripes, I was healed. No, himself took my infirmities and he carried my sicknesses. And I'm not carrying them. That he's healed me. He's forgiven me. He has set me free. Father, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Your plan has already been accomplished and fulfilled. Lord, we're just receiving it today, walking in it. Thank you, Father, for our liberties. It's so good to be set free. Thank you, Father, for healing our bodies, for healing our minds, for restoring our souls. Thank you, Father God. We have clarity of memory. We have healthy and strong bodies. Say this with me, congregation. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Everywhere I go, God goes with me. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. Jesus is blessed. I am blessed. Jesus is righteous. I am righteous. Jesus is healed, I am healed. Jesus is prosperous, I am prosperous. Thank you, Lord. I receive all those benefits. They're mine for the taking. Thank you, Lord, for healing me, for setting me free. It's so good to be free. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. And if you remember, Psalms 118 says, The Lord is good, and His mercies endure for how long? Forever. Thank you, Father, for your mercies. Thank you for your compassion. We just give you all the praise, all the glory. It's so good to be set free. Thank you, Father God. At the end of the day, we know no matter what happens, one day... We're going to be with you forever in heaven. Thank you, Father, but we're going to occupy. We're going to declare. We're going to do the works of Jesus that will give you all the praise and all the glory. 
Thank you, Father, for what you have done today. But, Lord, I know that there's more to come. It's like the one leopard that got healed. He came back and still worshiped Jesus. There's so much more you have for us. But thank you for what you have done today. Thank you for what you have given to us today. We received it by faith. We have it by faith. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Can you shout amen? Turn around and tell somebody, don't you forget, God is good to you and I. How often, church? All the time. See you Wednesday night. You are dismissed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.